And very quickly with me, please, to the book of uh, Genesis 32, verse 24. I'm going to start reading. 32, 24. And Jacob was left alone on the mountaintop, and there he wrestled with the man until daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, and it came out of joint. Then the man said to Jacob, Let me go, for daybreak cometh. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked Jacob, and he said, What is your name? And Jacob said, My name is Jacob. And the man said, Your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men, and you have overcome. Man, that's power. I mean, I don't know about you, but there's times in my life I question some of the things that God asks me and requires of me to do. And so there are sometimes things that I go through and I say, Lord, you really want me to do this? And I, I, I understand a little bit just what Jacob is going through this. And sometimes I have to really back against the things of God and have to go back and stand on His word because God, what God says, is there. And so, all of a sudden, uh, the man asked one more time, the man asked Jacob, what is your name? My name is Jacob. And you know, he says, your name will not be called Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men, and you have overcome it. May God bless the reading of His precious beautiful word. Do I have to have this microphone in front of me, Pastor Larry? No. No. Okay. Um, uh, God has given me four things, and He's really showed me to keep them enhanced in my life as I've been seeking the Lord and been trusting God to do certain things in my heart. And as I read about the life of Jacob, I understand a little bit about his struggles, and I tell everybody everywhere I go, you're looking at the biggest screw up in planet Earth right here, but for the grace of God. The only thing that separates me from anybody else in this service is the grace of God. You know, we, my son, we were talking about, Ray and I, was, we were coming over here, you know, how come we ended up in America? I came to America out of the will of God. And yet I thought I was in the will of God. I thought I was doing everything God was telling me. And then when I looked at the background of all my children and saw the consequences of my wrong choices and what it had upon their lives, I realized, really, you stepped out of God's will. But God is gracious and He is filled with love. And He began to slowly but surely turn the bad stuff into good. He began to turn it all around and make it work in our lives. Amen? Amen. And that's the same thing He's doing in everyone's life here this morning. He's changing your attitude. He's changing your heart. He's saying to you, listen, it's okay. What you're going through, I have it in the palm of my hands and I am in control of your life. And when I, when I read that, I get so inspired. And I mean, when you read about Jacob, he wrestled with his brother for the birthright. I mean, as a young man, his brother comes back from the fields, he's hungry, and Jacob says, he says to Jacob, give me something to eat. Jacob says, well, I will, but I want your birthright. The brother, without even thinking, just, just disrespectfully hands his birthright over to him. And of course, Jacob never ends it. He continues to, for, for whatever reason, he longs after this. You know, here's something I wondered about. We know that God spoke to Rachel and said to Rachel, the younger, the, sorry, the older will serve the younger. God's, you know, we, we read about this in, in, hang on, let me give it to you so I don't, I don't get confused. Uh, in, in Genesis 25, 23, and God said to Rebecca, two nations are in your womb, and they will both be separated. One will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. God literally told her this. Why didn't she tell her something? Because God honors His word. But she, again, didn't, you know, when I read this, I say to myself, she didn't trust God. She and Jacob went about and they, they pretty much schemed and plotted and planned to get this birthright, and all of a sudden, Jacob gets it, his father lays hand on him, and once the blessing is given, it cannot be taken back, and then all of a sudden, the brother Esau comes in, and Jacob hears it, and his brother Esau shouts, I am going to kill you. And those words dig deep in his gut. And no matter everywhere Jacob runs, he never forgets those words that came out of his brother's mouth. I am going to kill you for this. And he leaves. And finally he gets, Jacob gets to his father-in-law's place, uh, Laban, and uh, he, he, Laban offers him his daughters. He says, I want to marry Rachel. We worked for me for seven years, and he does. And all of a sudden, he finds out he's married a different woman, Leah. 
So he gets all mad and angry. So Jacob is constantly wrestling all the time. He's fighting and twisting against the things of God. And you know, sometimes it come, there comes a time in our life where we need to just submit to the things of God. Amen? Everyone is going through tough times. Everyone. Everywhere I go. I meet people who have just lost their homes. We lost our home 18 months ago. And it happens to me. You know, I take part responsibility for that. Because I signed the dotted line. But God is gracious. God knows the end of my life before the beginning. God has Mitch and I and my family's life in the palm of His hand. Just like He has yours. Everything you are struggling with, you, whether young or old, God has you in the palm of His hands. And He's saying to you, let me do what I need to do in your life to fine tune you, to bring you to a place where you will never be the same ever again. And Jacob wrestled constantly, not with his, with his father-in-law, but he, was, he had nothing to offer him. And his father-in-law said, well, listen, uh, you know, um, um, Jacob asked him for some flock. And his father-in-law said, well, went on and raved on about it. And Jacob said, I'll take the spotted ones. The father-in-law laughed at him. Because getting spotted animals is like kind of winning the lottery. Bee! Once in the blue moon, I don't know, whether you win something or go to the casino and win something, Jacob said, I'll take the spotted ones. And you know what he did? He goes to the trough and he puts a spotted thing before the trough where the animals come to drink water. And every animal born after that became spotted. All these spotted animals were born more than the white, the, or the, the, the white sheep against the spotted sheep. And Jacob became blessed. And God slowly but surely began to bless this man and finally sent him home. And on his way home, he wrestles with the man of God on this mountain. And that's where I want to come to this morning. What we need today is to fine-tune our relationship with Jesus. Christianity, listen to me, it's not about a church. It's not about a pastor. It's not about an organization. It's about a relationship with Christ. Amen. A relationship with Jesus. And when you fine-tune that relationship, you will never be the same person. Oh, you'll go through struggles, but every now and then you've got to come back to the foot of the cross. And fine-tune that relationship with Jesus. And here's Jacob on top of the mountain. All of a sudden he wrestled with the angel. The angel could see daybreak is coming and says, let me go. Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And that's where we got to come to. We have to find that place. God said to Moses, there is a place near me where you are stay. And that's the place you and me got to find. And Jacob found that place. And he said to the angel of God, I am not going to let you go until you bless me. When Jacob left that mountain, he didn't just leave with a new name. He left with a new heart. He left with a new purpose. He left with a new vision. He left with a new walk. He left with a new smile. He left with a new relationship with his God. He knew because he knew because he knew. This day on, I will never be the same man ever again because of my relationship with Christ. And that's what it's going to take between you and me and God. No matter what you're struggling with today, I promise you God is requiring something from each of us today, and that's to find you in our relationship with Him. There are four things I want to leave with you this morning, and here they are. The first thing is... In Matthew 5, 13, it says, You and I are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. If the salt loses its saltiness, it is good for nothing but to be temple and the food. We are living in a time today where it's more important now to share our faith with other people. To share your faith. When's the last time you sat down and took time to witness and share your faith with someone else? If ever the gospel message ever needed to be preached in America, it's now. Why do you think prayer stopped in the schools? I'll tell you why. Because it stopped in the homes first. If prayer was in the homes, it would never have stopped in the schools. And God is fine-tuning. He wants you and me to share our faith with people. Look for opportunities. I work, when I'm not away ministering, I work as a handyman washing mobile homes. And I was washing this mobile home one day, and I finished. And so I knocked on the mobile home next door. The lady comes out. I said, ma'am, would you like your mobile home washed while I'm here? She said, uh, no, thank you. I said, okay, the Lord bless you, and goodbye. She said, I beg your pardon? I said, God bless you, and goodbye. She said, excuse me, there is no God. 